If fragments of silicon are raining from the sky, please consult the nearest doctor. Welcome to another installment of Fragments of Silicon, The Daylight Interviews. Um, joining us this week is Sasha Darko. Yeah, hi to all of you. Hi, uh, how are you doing today? Uh, surviving in the heat in the park, near the water. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, so that would be why you might be hearing background noise for this episode. Like just noting that for the audience. Anyway, so how we like to get started is we like to get to know the people, person behind the games, studio, whatnot. And we start by asking this question. What got you interested in video games, both on a personal and professional level? Mm. Uh, Sega Genesis, uh, Sega Mega Drive is in my country is practically all I had in my child in my uh, childhood. And I played literally all of its uh, games. And when I had a PC, and when uh, I was thinking about making my own uh, Sega Genesis game, and I uh, and I did it. So it was practically it's like a dream dream game for my uh, favorite console. And that's and that's about it. Okay, yeah, I can I can see the through line here. Well, um. Why you know you'd make a Sega Genesis game, like? But um, before we get more into that, um, what what's your background in development? Um, how did you come about you know learning the skills to make a game? Mm, I had a lot of time uh, on my hands, and I dedicated it to uh, learning uh, Unity. C plus or all, all the stuff, but uh, I kind of hate programming. I like music, like uh, making scenes, art, music, uh, writing texts. And uh, I was, it was more pleasant for for me to do these things, much more than uh, programming. But it was forced, and I needed to uh, do it. And, and kind of, I'm I made a couple of games for PC for Steam. And, but uh, I I dropped uh, develop it, uh, developing uh, PC games uh, be, be, uh, be because the market is uh, all, is uh, over is oversaturated and uh, Sega Genesis niche is uh, small and uh, and, I, and I and I like it just like it well, that's it I can see the logic there um, and it's not wrong. Like th there are a lot of Steam games out there, like. But, um, so I suppose uh, getting to the actual game or uh, game series, um, what is Sacred Line? Mm, Sacred Line is a series of uh, horror games, uh, and the story uh, revolves around two uh, sisters, and the place is. Uh, Yugoslavia uh, uh, before the millennium. It's kind of an uh, alternate world where uh, Yugoslavia still exists, and uh, it has it has a lot of uh, many many things to tell. I I just don't know where to start with its uh, story. But um, I I I'm making an all, all, all like uh, this uh, old school uh, adventure games from uh, 80s. Like on Amiga and stuff, and uh, Spectrum, and uh, it's all of them like uh, vi uh, uh, visual novels, and it's a trilogy. So uh, where's this? Where's this Secret Land Three in the development? And it will be the final one. Okay, um, I'm sure we'll dig into that. But um, I suppose my next question is: uh, You've mentioned that this is a horror visual novel, which is a Strange choice for the, you know, Genesis because 
Um, I'm not saying that visual novels wouldn't have come out for the Genesis, but uh, we certainly didn't see them in the West, so to speak. Um, so I'm wondering, was it difficult to bring this genre to uh, a 16-bit console? It was very difficult uh, because the, uh, everything about the series is uh, very co very complex, and uh, visual novel is practically the only thing uh, I would choose uh, because um, with uh, the original game, it was like uh, uh, one uh, gig one gigabyte of uh, data, and I. Uh, and I adapted it, uh, we sold to just four uh, megabyte size of uh, Sega Genesis ROM. A lot of things, and uh, and I uh, also wanted uh, I also wanted to add uh, a, a lot of uh, background uh, to the story and uh, text uh, and uh, uh, visual novel itself. This uh, genre was uh, helping me a lot with that. <coughs> Sorry for my English. Yeah, it's fine. Um, and um, like, how did you compress all that into a Sega Genesis ROM? So I had uh, a lot of uh, free scenes. Uh, I was making them for uh, weeks in Unity, and I um, I pre I pre-rendered uh, them all, and uh, it was uh, also it was. Also difficult uh, because uh, Sega Genesis uh, has very strict limitations uh, when it uh, comes to colors, and uh, it uh, just one scene. It uh, it was about uh, 50 takes to make it to just one scene, so it was uh, working on uh, on the system. So it was all debugging, 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 and, uh, and uh, debugging again. I'm imagining that there was a lot of debugging to get this to work. Mm, yes, yes, uh, uh, be, uh, because the scenes are very colorful and uh, we were made with uh, much high, uh, higher resolution and I uh, needed to adapt it all. all right. Um, so was development for the Sega CD or 32X ever a consideration? It was uh, uh, at some point, but uh, the engine I chose, Jinx, it was uh, created only for the, for uh, Sega Genesis and uh, Sega CD games. Uh, I think it's where uh, not a lot, where uh, not a, a huge uh, market uh, for that kind of games. I think uh, Genesis has much more people uh, to buy games for. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's how it was back in the day, uh, because they were peripherals and only a certain segment of the buying audience would have that. So the market potentiality has always been smaller, and I'm sure that's, you know, degraded over time because, you know, the Sega CD is a CD drive. Um, those break a lot easier than your solid state consoles. And the 32X... Um, yeah, that's solid state, but it had a lot of parts to it. Um, a lot of parts that um, could go missing easily. I'm looking at you, uh, that one wire that seemingly goes missing. Also, it's ended so, with notoriously going terrible. the base genesis makes sense. Um, anyway, so in terms of control, uh, how did you get a visual novel to work with the Sega Genesis uh, pad? Was that any sort of difficult? Uh, no, no. It's uh, in in terms of uh, programming, it kind of was uh, pretty easy. Uh, the only difficulties were with uh, rendering and uh, adapting the scenes much more when uh, programming, uh, because it's a text game with uh, uh, choices but barely existent. It's just all about uh, bad uh, endings in the first part. Uh, the second part is. Uh, it's kind of like an uh, open world uh, uh, visual novel. It was a little bit uh, difficult to program when the first game, but uh, nothing uh, dramatic. Well, that's good to know. Like, 
And I suppose before we go more into the programming side of thing for like Sacred Line 2, um, what's the story of Sacred Line? Uh, you know, you, you've gotten a general synopsis, but like, um, like who are you? Like who are you running from? Like who are the characters, the main character? You know, stuff like that. Uh, it's it's all about uh, uh, occult, uh, occult, uh, what was uh, kidnapping people uh, for uh, centuries? Occult, yeah. Uh, what was uh, kidnapping people for for centuries, and where were uh, um, and where <clears throat> I don't know this word. Mm. And when uh, the result of her walk was uh, arrival of uh, ancient demons, and these ancient demons uh, killed them all, and we uh, start to uh, prepare the new uh, world uh, order. Kind of like that. I don't know how to describe it uh, shortly, but uh, with uh, two sisters, uh, way uh, one of them was uh, uh, kidnapped by the uh, by the cult, and the and the other one is uh, looking for her, and it's all about uh, this uh, uh, where relations uh, between these two and the uh, collapsing world around them. Okay. And shifting forward to Sacred Line 2, where is this in the story? Uh, the Sacred Line 2 uh, story starts with the... Uh, uh, it's all about Second Sister, what was uh, missing in the first part. And the first mm -hmm. part was telling uh, about Ellen, uh, looking for her sister. And the second part is uh, telling about uh, Sarah and uh, her adventures and, re and uh, reuniting with uh, Ellen. So, okay. kind of like that. Okay. And I'm noting here that uh, uh, Sacred Line 2 is apparently like two to three times bigger than the first one. Um, what was done to make this accomplished on the Sega Genesis? Uh, the story is uh, much more bigger. And uh, it had about uh, the same uh, amount of uh, scenes, but it has uh, much more music and had much more it much story parts. It's about two hours long if you read it on average. And the first part, uh, pe uh, people were complaining about the finishing in uh, 40 minutes, uh, minutes in uh, in uh, 30 minutes. And I, uh, I learned it, what uh, uh, people need to um, a much longer game. Uh, yeah. Okay. And um, you see here. So, what kind of visual novel is this? Is is it a pure read through? Do you make choices? It 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 has uh, it has some choices uh, uh, regarding uh, where we where you will go, and you can uh, uh, you can uh, how to describe uh, it it has uh, same bad endings like in the first part, but you can uh, l uh, learn more about your environments and if you enter the scene you can uh, like in old school uh, adventure games you can uh, press about uh, look in the cabin look at the uh, right left uh, kind of like that so i wanted to player to feel uh, like uh, he is in the world and he can uh, go uh, in uh, all directions, but uh, the, the the major part of this is happening uh, in the first uh, major location, and when in, and when in, uh, all goes to the uh, same route like in the first game, you just uh, go through the main story, and you ha and you have some puzzles where two where where two puzzles, <clears throat> and uh, it's kind of like uh, linear th uh, through the rest of the game. Okay. And is there combat in the game? 
the combat is the same like it was before. It's uh, it's it's a dice uh, uh, battle system. You have choices. Uh, you uh, drop the dice, and uh, according to dice, you make your choice. Right. Um, and is there an option for combat avoidance? Like, can you run? Is uh, can you do stealth? Uh, no, there's no such option. It's uh, it's all it's uh, based all around dice, all, all uh, such choices. Okay. And are there multiple endings? Mm, I'm 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 working on a I'm working on, uh, on a patch, and uh, it will add a uh, secret ending. But uh, right now, where is one main ending? And uh, a lot of uh, bad endings, like in the first game. Okay. And um, is there any sort of like musical soundtrack in this uh, game series, or is it more ambient noise? Uh, uh, where is uh, a lot of stuff in the soundtrack? Uh, I, I use I, I use uh, synths. I use uh, guitars. Yeah, uh, where, where's even female vocals? Mm, it's uh, it's uh, kind of symphonic in the part two. When it was in the first game, the first game was all about uh, ambientish, uh, and the uh, uh, second one uh, has uh, this uh, kind of uh, battle drums and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, and um, wh what sort of sound font are you using for the Sega Genesis Mega Drive here? Uh, the sound, uh, I'm uh, making uh, yeah. everything through uh, FL Studio, and when I uh, adapt the web, uh, the, WAV the WAV files uh, to be played on, this, on the Sega Genesis, it's not a uh, tracker music at all. Okay, right, because there are a few ways to do sound and music on the Genesis, like, you know, like the Gems font versus uh, FM sound. Things of that nature. Um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, a PCM uh, audio. Yeah. Uh, now, as I understand it, Sacred Line Two is out on the PC right now, and is in like like the actual physical Genesis game is in development still. Uh, no, no, it uh, won't be on uh, PC. Uh, it's a uh, Sega Genesis uh, exclusive at the moment. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, has it uh, has the physical product uh, product been released yet? I signed a contract with uh, Mega Cats uh, Studios, and it sh it shall be ready in uh, uh, some time uh, we uh, this year. I don't know when exactly uh, because we uh, have other projects uh, to release right now, and the Secret Line Two will be uh, in the next month. So it's on the schedule. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if we talked about Sacred Line 2 when we had Mega Cat on the program. Um, I, think, I think it might have come up, but uh, it definitely wasn't the highest of games that we talked about then. It's kind of a problem. Like when you talk about like a bunch of games at one time, it, it kind of blurs. But um, anyway. Uh, and I see that there's uh, a, I'm not sure, uh, is this a campaign for uh, DLC? Uh, yeah, I make uh, custom deal, uh, DLCs for uh, uh, people who order them. And it's uh, based all around you. You can uh, tell me your job, what to do about your family, and I can place you in the, your own story and make it in the uh, uh, Secret Land universe. Okay. And how is that going right now? I already did one DLC for one uh, American fa uh, for one um, uh, American family, and it's uh, for all ages uh, uh, kind of story because we're uh, two kids, five and six years uh, old, and where where we'll be reading in uh, 
uh, like it's uh, all the family on the couch and where we'll be playing this uh, game it's about uh, 15 minutes uh, shot and his uh, it's it's all new music it's all new uh, backgrounds and uh, story based uh, uh, about them it's about darkness what was uh, hunting for uh, people but it's for all ages and it has no blood no uh, violence and it's very it was very interesting to write uh, all ages uh, story for all fa- for all family okay and how many of uh, this are you doing uh, right now I do literally nothing uh, because I'm living uh, in Russia and uh, at Lee and uh, PayPal is blocked uh, with the MasterCard are gone and uh, I can uh, uh, receive money at all by all means. Right. Um, c- uh, certain circumstances have precipitated this. Like, so, um, moving on. Uh, what sort of sa- non-sacred line projects are you working on, if any, and, and uh, other than like the the Survivor DLC? Mm, I'm not I'm not working uh, on any games except Sacred Line uh, series. I'm uh, working on uh, Third Path, and it's probably will be the last game I uh, did uh, because I have. Uh, our things to do, like uh, modeling, music, and uh, and many other things, and, and this is just a side project. Okay. Um, and what is this small project that you're working on? Mm, snow. Or, um, sorry, I may have misunderstood that. Um, Anyway, uh, you did mention that um, next up is Sacred Line 3. Um, so is this looking to be even bigger than the second one? I think it will, uh, it will be about the same, and just the story itself and the, uh, the devel- it's developing right now. And when, it, uh, and when I'll be doing the graphics, uh, we'll see, we'll see. Okay. And... Are you looking to change any of the gameplay elements to Sacred Line 3? Uh, no, it will stay uh, on the same edge and the, and the mechanics uh, will stay the same. That's uh, probably a smart thing. Um, um, I guess like the overall question is, um, do you see development going about the same as Sacred Line 2? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm working, uh, like I mentioned, uh, I'm working uh, on the patch and it will fix. Uh, 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 I have a, a, a proofreader from US right now and he'll uh, and right now he's uh, going through the whole script. And uh, we'll, we'll be fixing uh, the script, the typos left. And when will be this uh, secret ending and uh, some fix uh, according with the one of the game choice in the village. And that's about it. It's about the whole patch. Mm. And without getting into spoilers, um, what's this chapter going to be about? Uh, sorry, what uh, chapter? Um, this installment. Um, you know, what's going to be the final culmination of the of this cult confrontation? Hmm. I can't tell much uh, details now, but uh, uh, like I mentioned, it's a trilogy, and with uh, side uh, DLCs I make for people, we kind of like uh, exist uh, in the uh, when it's part one and uh, uh, part two uh, timeline, and the uh, third part will be the final one, and it in uh, it ends uh, the whole story. And if it will be our spin-off or uh, DLCs, it will be a secret line uh, to timeline, I think. 
Okay. And uh, how far along in development would you say Sacred Lion 3 is? Mm, I started to work on it uh, right after I was uh, finished with Sacred Lion 2 uh, 1 uh, with the first uh, version. And I'm working on it for about uh, two months, I think. Okay. And how much longer would you think that it would take to get Sacred Lion 3 completed? I think it will take about uh, seven months, like it was with the previous parts. But uh, I had a lot of uh, scenes, uh, 3D scenes uh, I built in Unity, so it uh, helps a lot to make uh, things uh, e easier and faster to do. Okay. And um, see. So for physical release, do you see yourself going with Mega Cat Studios again? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I'll see if my colleagues here have any further questions for you. I think I'm good. Everything I was wondering was answered, so... Sorry, I was muted. I think I think I answered all my questions too. Uh, yeah. There weren't any difficulties getting the graphics in the game, were there? Because I know the Genesis is not quite as good at colors as um, later systems. Oh, ah, uh, ah! Uh, it was the it uh, was the question about uh, about colors. Yeah, just yeah. like it looks. Yeah, uh, I think I uh, to I I talked about the colors. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, she mentioned the colors earlier in the interview. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. I, so Sorry, I think I that's I about. Away for a little bit earlier. Sorry. It's okay. Duly noted. It's okay. I'll rewatch it later. All right. Um, yeah, I think that, uh, Sasha, I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule and being with us here today. Like, um, hopefully... Uh, thank you, too. Yeah. Um, so, where can one get Sacred Line 2? It's on my website, uh, sashadarko.com, uh, at the moment. And well, it will be on uh, uh, MegaCat website later. Okay. And where can they? And where can people go to if they want to uh, have a Survivor DLC created for them? Mm, it's a, it's a Sacred Line uh, two page on sashadarko.com. That's okay. it. Uh, That's it. All right. So. Yeah, if you want Sacred Line 2 or the uh, Survivor DLC, be sure to go to sashadarko.com um, currently, and Mega Cat will have the physical edition um, ready whenever it's ready. Um, right, um, so that'll about do it for this installment of Fragments of Silicon. Um, Sunday reviews have been delayed to Monday due to um, holiday circumstances. And so until then, I shall wish you good gaming.